Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. You know, I think you all are aware of the impacts of wildfires that are felt nationwide. The wildland season is, is upon us right now, and we locally, we will continue to help where we can and support our neighbors in their time of need. And we know there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. Even to date, um, even in May, we sent two of our firefighters to Fort Wainwright, Alaska, to help with the wildfire they were having up there. They were there for 13 days. It really takes um, the nation's fire service to battle these um, very difficult times. Myself, along with our other King County fire chiefs, this is one of our ongoing conversations on how we stay prepared, not just for wildfires, but for any, any event that we may face. Uh, matter of fact, before I just came here, we were just having a conversation about that. Um, although we don't see a lot of wildfires occurring here in the urban area, we really want you to know that the impacts are noticeable. And you can just think about last year when the fires were burning to the north of us in Canada, there were many of them, and we saw all those beautiful sunsets, but that happened because there were major wildfires burning. You know, here in Seattle, we're, we're paying attention to what's going on. To date, we've had over 50 grass, brush, and bark fires already. Um, and we know the challenges are ahead of us that are coming. The big 4th of July weekend is coming, and I do want to remind all of you and the community that fireworks are illegal here in Seattle. We're going to do our best to um, get that message out to the community, encourage people to go and see one of the public fireworks shows. But we also want to give you a couple of things that you can do to help um, brush fires um, not happen. You know, we want you to think about when you discard smoking materials. Think about where you're putting them. Think, make sure they're in the appropriate container when you discard them. We want you to think about doing a survey of your home or, or your, your lawns. And think about when you see large, tall, dry grass and weeds. We want you to trim that down. Six inches is kind of a threshold. If you have um, dead trees, dead um, bushes and brush around your your, your lawns, your homes, we want to make sure that you remove all that. If you have tree limbs hanging over your house, and that's, that's a part of the ladder fuels, if you've ever heard that term, ladder fuels. So you have the grass that's present to the brush, that's present to the trees. If the trees are connected to your house, it will spread into your house. We want to break that ladder. We want to break that chain. And it takes sometimes us getting out there doing a little bit of work. We also want to remind you about safety in the summer. We know that it's barbecue season, and, and last weekend, Dad's weekend, was a good weekend for that. I know that's what, what I did. But we want to talk about safety with the kids and the pets and make sure you have a safe zone when you're barbecuing to make sure the kids aren't getting hurt. That's also important. And we want to remind you, if any of these bad things happen, if a fire happens, if someone is injured, we want to remind you to call 911. And we're going to be there to, to support you and, and give you the service that you need so, so we can make it a little bit better. So with all that being said, I have the pleasure of introducing our mayor this morning. So I would like to introduce Mayor Jenny Durkin. Thank you, Chief Scoggins, and uh, very honored to be here today with uh, Craig Kenworth of Puget Sound Clean Air and uh, Jeff Duchin of Sin Seattle King County Public Health, who you'll be hearing from. Look, Seattle's changed and the region's changed, and we've seen the direct impacts of climate in so many ways, but one of the ways we've seen it here in Seattle is smoke. Um, and we were hoping the first year that it was an aberration, and the second year that maybe it was a second aberration. But we now know it may be the new normal. And with that, uh, I've heard a number of people say, August was why I stayed in Seattle. Um, and I urge you, don't leave. Um, but you know, we experienced last year 24 days in our summer where we had a really dangerous level of air quality, where it was yellow or higher. Um, and that includes eight days that it was unhealthy for anybody to be outside. Um, and so we have to prepare as if this will be the new normal. Um, Land Commissioner Hillary Franz could not be here. I really want to give her office tremendous amount of credit that they are trying to get ahead of this wildfire season. They're doing all they can on the off season to prepare our forest to take the measures they have to. But here in Seattle, we know that much of the smoke that we suffered is generated in Canada. Um, and we have to have those 
cross-border collaborations with Canada to make sure that happens. This Smoke Ready Day is one that we have been preparing with for a while. Seattle and King County working together with Pierce County, Kitsap County, Snohomish County, the mayors of Bremerton and others to ensure that the region's really prepared for what do we have to do. Um, that in includes taking the steps that the chief outlined here. They seem like easy, common sense steps, but you'd be surprised at how often those everyday things can lead to a fire or other circumstance. And as a city, we have to take other steps. One of the things we've been looking at is, if this is the new normal, how do we equip our city so that people living in this city have somewhere safe to be when the smoke levels are high? Um, so one of the things we're doing is looking at our community centers to see how do we upgrade our HVAC systems so that we actually are screening out the worst of the smoke and toxins. And we've done that, and we've done it here um, in Rainier Beach Community Center. We've also uh, targeted those areas in the first wave that we know where the public is frequently, or we want to be able to bring the public if they have, don't have other safe places to go. So there's three facilities at Seattle Center that we've also upgraded to give better HVAC systems to really clean the air coming through. That includes the Armory and Fisher Pavilion um, and the Expo Center. We also wanted to create a resource for people so that on our website people can click on it and one, know what is the air quality today, and two, what steps do I take to help myself and my family? I really want to make a, a really emphasize a point. The safest thing to do when the air quality is the worst is to stay inside. Um, that's the safest measure that people can take. We know that's not practical for everyone and depending on whether it's work day or not, what we do. So we wanna make sure that we keep that website up to date so people know really what can they do that day for the, the level of air condition. I wanna thank everyone who's been working on this for a period of time, including uh, public health, as I said, and the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency. Um, Seattle Fire Department, thank you for everything you're doing, Chief, and your firefighters as well. Um, as, as some of you know, my nephew godson is a firefighter in Renton, uh, and I, every summer, am worried that he'll be called to one of the wildfires that are raging more and more in other outlying areas. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's, who's been working on this to keep our, our city safe and to be preparing. Um, I want to make one last comment on this, just it is another aspect of climate change. And we see more and more that climate change is affecting communities in ways um, that really go to our everyday life. This is one of those ways. And so we all as, as a city also are going to be making sure that we do everything we can to do our part to lessen our climate load. We have to decarbonize as a city. We heard an announcement today that Canada is going to be opening its pipeline. And as a result of that, we will see significantly more oil freighters in the Salish Seas. Um, that puts our orcas at risk, it puts our water at risk, and it's all for the same reason for oil. Um, and so we have got to take steps as a society to reduce that. I want to now introduce to you our King County Public Health Officer, Jeff Duchin. I know many of you are familiar with him. If you're not, he really is the go-to guy on so many things, and he'll walk us through some of the other issues. Jeff? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Good morning and thank you, uh, Mayor, for uh, inviting me to participate in this important topic. Um, more frequent and more severe wildfires are one of the important health consequences of climate change that we all need to be prepared for. Wildfire smoke is unhealthy for everyone. It causes irritation of the nasal mucosa, the throat, the eyes, it can cause headaches, coughing, and for some people, it can lead to severe illness. For young children, for adults who are 65 and older, for pregnant women, and for anyone who's got an underlying cardiovascular condition, asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease, uh, it can be very severe. So we all need to be prepared, and there are things that we can do. We can monitor the air quality daily. We can do that by checking Puget Sound Clean Air Agency's website, the Air Now website. We've got a good uh, public health Seattle and King County website. When air is at unhealthy levels, stay indoors as much as possible. You want to reduce your exposure to the smoke. 
Unfortunately, that means one of the reasons why we love living here is to be outdoors and exercising, and we really need to understand that's not a healthy thing to do when there's wildfire smoke in the air. We need to reduce our exertion, we need to minimize exercise, and that should drive us all to understand what a serious issue this is and how it impacts our quality of life. Now, wildfire smoke isn't happening now. We expect more severe, more frequent seasons, but right now we've got a great opportunity to prepare, to make plans. If you work with children, if you have children, if you work outdoors, have a plan for what you'll do on those smoky days and how you'll keep track of the risk by knowing the levels of toxins in the air by going to one of those websites and know how you'll be able to either stay home, stay indoors, or go to a location where the air can be clean. You can consider getting an air purifier for your home or your apartment or wherever you're living. And there's some great examples here around the room on, uh, on tables of things that can be done and good information on how to prepare those air purifiers for your home. And again, I just want to um, close by reminding everyone that because wildfire smoke is expected to be more frequent and more severe in our region, it's essential to prepare now at Public Health, we'll be continuing to work closely with our colleagues at the Washington State Department of Health, at the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, with the City of Seattle and other cities in King County to get information out to you and make sure that you have access to uh, the best information when you need it. We have a very good uh, wildfire smoke website at Public Health Seattle and King County, and we also have a very good blog that's up now uh, where you can find additional information that can be shared with others in the community. So uh, thank you again for being here and um, your interest in this, um, in this issue, and I'd li like to introduce uh, Craig Kenworthy from the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency. Good afternoon. I want to talk to you about what the wildfire season looks like and what you can do to get current information about smoke conditions in our region. As the mayor mentioned, it is not just a question of our own fires. We can be hit from smoke from Canada, from California, from Oregon, Eastern Washington can be hit with smoke from Idaho and Montana. So the forecast in the near term in some of those places is better than it was last year. Unfortunately, the forecast for August is it shows above average fire risk in British Columbia. We are already in drought on the western side of the Cascade, so I want to emphasize what the chief said about avoiding causing fires in our vicinity and on the west side as well. Wildfire smoke is related to climate change. The National Climate Assessment from last fall said that half of the acres burned in the last 25 years in the United States were related to climate change. That does not include Canada, and as was mentioned, we get a lot of our smoke from Canada. So the number one thing we can do in the long term, the number one thing we can do, as one writer put it, to be good ancestors to everyone, is to tackle climate change. So in the near term this summer, if you want information about what are the current air quality conditions, please go to our website, pscleanair.org. You can click on the forecast to see what the current conditions are at a county level and what we recommend in terms of activity based on your conditions locally and also your own health. And then you can zoom in on our air quality map and look at individual air quality monitors. You can click there to see what is the current air quality, what has the recent air quality been, and what do we recommend in terms of activity levels, whether that's that we recommend you stay indoors, we recommend that you can engage in light activity, or, or we recommend that it's actually safe to engage in heavier exertion and exercise. So I urge all of you to look at that. We also keep that updated on our Twitter account at, P at PS Clean Air and on our Facebook page as well. Last summer was daunting. Unfortunately, we are losing part of summer. As someone who came from a place with two seasons, winter and July 14th, <laughs> which is what it's like in Montana, it seems like, I know how much we love that. It's a sad thing to say this, but if you love the outdoors, you might want to think about getting out when it's safe, because we can't tell you anymore that it's always going to be safe. We do want you to be safe when those conditions are bad. We do want you to get the respite from the smoke that was talked about. Everything you can do to help a vulnerable neighbor or a family member to get out of the smoke, even for limited periods of time, will help them from a health standpoint. So I urge you to take care of yourselves and take care of your friends and neighbors. Thank you.
So I want to take questions. I also, I, I uh, failed to also thank our parks department. This is, of course, their facility. Um, but in the summers, our parks are ground central for a lot of the fun that happens in the city. But they're also one of those places where we always have to be evaluating what is the risk to people if the smoke level gets too high. So thanks to all the folks from parks as well. <laughs> Any questions? Matt. Um, Mayor, a couple questions. You, you have control over your city staff, your employees. When there's a. Would you tell them that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, when there's an unhealthy smoke event this summer, do you plan to take any action, possibly for the employees who are working outside? Uh, are you planning ahead for something like that as a proactive healthy? It's a really great question. We'll evaluate like that. We're preparing now to see what the range of scenarios are. So for example, we're going to be looking at whether we can have a greater number of flexible work options so that if people have to work outdoors and we've determined that they don't need to that day, we can put them someplace where it's indoors. For those people who have to continue to work outdoors and we think that it that we will make sure that we have safety precautions for them so they can continue to do their job and we'll literally have to make that on a probably on a daily basis depending on what the levels of smoke are um, we will be really um, emphasizing to people who don't have to work outdoors on those days where there is hazard to stay inside and to make sure that we're looking at that. So we'll be looking at a whole range of things, the equivalent of kind of like we do for Sundays or for snow days. We're now gonna have to be looking at what do we do for smoke days. And one follow up, just in terms of uh, unsanctioned encampments and the fires, those have always been a perennial problem and the chief just spoke about 50 grass fires up to date. Uh, some of them I believe probably come from these homeless camps. Um, any proactive action on cracking down on fires in some of these unsanctioned camps? I think what we're doing is as we're, as you know, we're doing a lot more work through the navigation team to do outreach, not just to encampments, but to those that are obstructions or in the public right of way. And one of the things we'll be looking for is to make sure that there aren't those types of fire hazards, that we don't see barbecues and propane tanks and the things that have led to those fires and things. So we'll be very cognizant of that and trying to be proactive. Obviously, um, you know, we won't be able to prevent every fire caused by people for any reason but the first line of defense is always going to be people themselves you know if you're doing the barbecue in the grill whether it's at home or in a park be really cognizant of how dry the grass is and we'll be through both our uh, normal public safety approach be making sure that we're on higher alert for those potentials for having either encampments or other places to make sure that we're we don't have those unexpected fires Oh, good afternoon. I think this is a great, great event. It was worth the cost of free admission for that wonderful hack. And for the cake. And for the cake, yeah, the cake. My question also is, is there a contingency fund for those who can't afford the box band and filter um, in order to make their, uh, their safer at home? Like $45. Yeah, we're looking through various programs to see if there's a way to help or subsidize. We haven't identified one yet, um, which will make it all the more important. It's one way that we identified where are those areas that we can upgrade, like Rainier Valley and other places, so that those communities that might be less able to have that things in access. So our first line was make sure we had safe places for people to go in the community. But we will always look to see if there's ways we can subsidize those kind of health things. We've also been asked a number of times, why don't you give masks out to everyone? A um, couple things about that. A number of people actually, the mask doesn't provide the protection they need. Uh, and so we, we really evaluate the best line of defense is for people to stay inside. Move. Sorry, you can go, him and then you. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, first, I really appreciate the effort by the city, so, and I think the focus on providing clean air space is really important. I guess I'm not so convinced that the only advice about staying inside, actually I'm an air quality scientist, so we tested my house, it wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. And indoor air can be uh, almost as bad as outdoors. And so I guess, this is kind of a question for Puget Sound too, the question is that advice of, oh, go inside, I think we also have to know, is your inside air any good? I think it's a great, it is a great point. I think I'll lay like answer with it. Yeah. Perfect. So, so one of the things that I want to emphasize on staying inside is it's challenging when it can be warm, but if you keep your house buttoned up, about half that particulate will settle out of the air. But if you keep opening and closing the windows, you're right, you're going to continue to introduce new particulate in there. 
So that's one of the reasons we're emphasizing some of the things the city's talking about is getting that respite, even if you can't get that respite all the time at home. But if you can shut up your house or your apartment, you will get a settling out of the particulate. You'll be cleaning that up later, but you won't be breathing it as much. So, but it is, we recognize it's challenging to do that in warm conditions. Um, Ms. Mayor, I was just wondering, um, you mentioned that you likened it to snow days, and I was just curious, during snow days, the city does, you know, has opened uh, warming shelters for people who are homeless. Uh, and I was curious, do you have any plans for people who can't go inside, especially given the city's facing a surge in homelessness right now? It's a great question, and it's, we are going to try to see what we can do on that front. It's one reason why we made sure that the Fisher Pavilion and the Armory and the places in Seattle Center had the upgraded HVAC so that if we got to a place where we felt that it was very unsafe to be outside, we could use our navigation team and others to contact people, offer them the ability to come inside to their or to some of the other shelter systems we have in place. So I think that we really, we, we won't be able to do, I don't want to promise people that we'll be able to do 100%, but I think that we saw with the snow days that, that we could do a better job at helping those people who are experiencing homelessness and living without shelter to get them to a safer place for a period of time if we couldn't provide them housing. So is the idea that those are sort of up, up convertible if need be, in a sense? Correct. Um, and we'll have to, on a daily basis, try to, to evaluate when you would activate something like that. And a lot of that, unfortunately, with the smoke days, our projections on when it comes and how long it lasts aren't as good as they are on the snow days. Um, and so it will be a less perfect science, but we're really going to be looking for those opportunities to do that. There, so last summer, according to the Puget Sound Community Agency, it was 10 unhealthy days. Um, in August at least. So for the places that you are opening, Seattle Center, the three facilities, and then the two community centers, would you then consider keeping them open all night and morning so people could actually sleep? And, and yeah, I think we'll have to look at, the, I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's something we'll look at for that, is what capacity we would have and what capacity to have people do the equivalent of shelter in, in place. So I think we're gonna have to look at a range of things. Um, and obviously we're preparing for the worst. Um, but last summer was pretty bad. Um, and if we're expecting this to become the new normal, we're seeing that it's yet another place where cities are having to step up to deal with the consequences of actions that are beyond their control. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you to everybody for being here and all the work you're doing. Good job.